But now, what about bringing Boris back to save the Conservatives? 0207 862 So this is the Times. Let me show you here. And it says, it's really clear headline, Johnson to join election campaign in Red Wall. There we go. All right. And, and obviously what the hope is, I guess, of, of Rishi Sunak, that he can deploy the former prime minister in the Red Wall seats to win them back and take the fight to Keir Starmer has apparently been a thawing in relations with Rishi Sunak. Is it the right move? What do you think? Is it still time for them to bring him back as leader? Somebody who's called in the last week for Boris Johnson to lead the Conservatives is the former Culture Secretary Nadine Doris. Good morning. Morning. So you, well, first of all, on this story, is it true that he's going to be deployed in the Red Wall? No, that story is absolute fiction. Um, it says in the story that there's a thawing of the relations between Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson. That's completely untrue. Rishi Sunak hasn't spoken to Boris Johnson for over a year. There, there, is, there are no plans for any campaigning. And that story has been strategically placed for a reason today, in today's front page of The Times. And it's to try and stop any other Conservative MPs defecting to reform. Um, MPs have been calling out for Boris Johnson to, for Rishi Sunak to pick up the phone to Boris Johnson, and obviously he hasn't. And I think you may hear more maybe coming from Boris Johnson's office today, but it is a complete nonsense. In that article, it also says Rishi Sunak won't be sharing a platform with Boris Johnson. Of course he wouldn't, because he'd be monstered. Boris Johnson would totally diminish him in every way. So it's, I'm afraid that story is um, being placed by number 10, probably by Isaac Levido for a very strategic reason. Oh, and, you know, Richard Ty should be patting himself on the back because he's he's part of that reason why that story is appearing on the front of today's Times. And I, and I guess, at least if, if the Conservatives put that on a front page, you can't then have a defection to the Reform Party on a front page. So they displaced it, Richard. So, I, I mean, it's difficult to argue that Richard, is his party's making the weather today, right? Well, we're making serious progress. That's why the number 10 is so terrified, as Nadine has just said. And so they're, they're now literally publishing fake stories to try and to stop the, uh, to stop the sort of uh, the drift towards the Common Sense Party Reform UK. So, so where does this go, Nadine? Because... I gather there might be nine other Conservative MPs who are thinking of going over to reform. Does that sound right to you? So, Richard, with the greatest of respect, I've been around the block for a number of times. <laughs> so has Aisha, actually. We've been around a long time. And I remember 2015 very well, when Nigel Farage was saying exactly the same things that Richard Tice has been saying over the last 24 hours. It's like the playbook. And Nigel Farage was saying in, so 2013, 2014, 2015, we're speaking to Conservative MPs every day. We've got a list of Conservative MPs waiting to defect. I doubt it's true. But, um, but Richard, you know, well, it's, it's politics and all is fair in love and politics. Well, I, but I doubt very much that you're going to see nine Conservative MPs jumping ship. The reason why Lee has is, of course, Lee had lost the Conservative whip. He was homeless. He was finding himself, you know, Lee is a, a very kind and gentle soul. He may not appear that way sometimes. I grew up with men like Lee. My husband was a minor. I grew up with men like Lee. And Lee is going to find this very hard um, having defected to another party. He's going to be sitting on the opposite benches to Conservative MPs, the people he's called his mates for the last four years, the guys he works with, the guys he goes out drinking and eating with in the evenings, he's going to find it very lonely and very difficult. Mm. And MPs know that. And you're not going to find, to, to move family, to divorce your family is a very hard thing to do. But of course, what happened, what we've seen here is that Rishi Sunak doesn't do politics. You know, David Cameron and Boris Johnson both had their eye constantly to UKIP late latterly reform. They both were keeping their eye very carefully on where the Conservative vote was migrating towards. They kept reform out. They kept UKIP out. It was only when Boris Johnson joined the Leave campaign that it took off and it began to leave, began to move ahead in the polls. And, you know, we delivered Brexit 
And now the, the, the UKIP threat has come around again. The reason why it has is because Rishi Sunak has not been watching right. what happens on both sides of the political spectrum. He's allowed reform to come sweeping in. And I'm afraid Rishi Sunak just doesn't do politics. Uh, and okay. it's never been more obvious than it is today. I, I hear what you say about, about this. Farage said all this in 2015. But actually, there were a couple of defections in 2015. There's a guy called Mark Reckless. There was Douglas Carr as well. And then they had the Brexit well, referendum. Well, I know they lost. They lost. They, they defected and they lost at the election. That's true. Derek in Devon, what do you think of this? Do you think they should bring Boris back? They should bring Boris back, and they should get rid of all the backstabbers that uh, got him out. Now you look what uh, Sunek has done. He's just invited Cameron back in, and um, I can understand Lee Anderson leaving the Tories to go to Reform UK. Massive, massive up to him because he's actually speaking for everybody else. Now, the Tories have failed to deliver what Nigel Farage got this country wanting, and that's the Brexit. He's also got the, prime, uh, the uh, Mayor of London in his pocket as well. And I personally would re uh, vote for Reform UK because they are actually going to do what the British public want, and that's to get our country back. So, so when, you, when you say that, Derek, I mean, there's one, that's one reading of Brexit. The other reading was it was never going to work and actually no one can deliver it. No, because you've got spineless people in the Tories running this country and they are bending over backwards for the minority or the immigrants of this country. To, I mean, we go to other countries and we have to abide by their laws, their religion, their culture, etc., People come to this country and we're bending over backwards to accommodate their laws, their religion, their culture. This is, Let's going, not forget, Aisha, this is, this is where it's going to be, this election, isn't it? On this kind of conversation. Richard. Hang on, Derek. I mean, it's really interesting hearing um, Derek's views. He's obviously very, very frustrated. But the idea that the problems of this country are just magically going to be solved by, I don't know what, rounding up all immigrants by... Get our country uh, back. That's I, the I mean, phrase. And this kind of weird freeze, get our country back. It's such a nebulous freeze. It doesn't mean anything specific. What does that mean, get our country back? Does that mean just have like white people well, in this tell, tell, Derek, does what do you mean, mean, get what, our what country does, back? What does it mean? What does it mean? Can I, can I'm I an just, immigrant. Do I have I to leave? Do I have that? to go? No. What I am saying is, it's fine to have immigrants come into the country, but respect our laws, respect our culture, respect our religion, and don't throw your culture in our face. You're quite welcome to come to this country, but don't try and turn this country into the country that you've left. So, I'd like to get some examples from you, but how do you think just making that argument about you coming to our country, by the way, lots of us did come Mosque. to this country. People Mosque. like my parents Mosque. came. People, what? So what? So, so I'm a Muslim, we just get rid of all mosques and that magically solves all the problems. That solves the poverty, it solves the homelessness, it solves all the problems in this country, just getting, what, you just bomb all, set fire to every mosque in this country. Is that what solves no, this country's no, problem? Mosque. You get British people go to other countries, you don't see them building churches, Christian churches and that, do you? you, you well, well, I don't know if I, you've heard about the empire, about the British Empire. That's exactly what Britain and did. And also you wouldn't want us to model ourselves on, on those countries that don't allow churches. I mean, Richard, you're going to have to, you know, Derek's your voter, right? So he's, is he on the right track here? I think the concept Removing of mosques. Th this expression, getting our country back, 20 years ago, the country was actually working much better. And that's because fundamentally uh, we, had, we were strong on law and order. It paid to go to work. And, you know, we had, we, had, uh, we had strong borders. We didn't have net zero. The economy was growing. Well, but this and, is that we were in the EU and we had a Labour government 20 years ago. Uh, uh, th that's the point. But also we didn't have mass immigration that people didn't vote for uh, that is now actually depressing British wages. Blimey. These things, and we didn't have net zero. And these things are depressing on British growth. And I think, yeah, you know, we want to be strong on law and order. The Tories but would are you, would you consider, that, that if go. it was good for us economically, would you want us to go back into the EU? Yeah, that's, that's not the point. We know really? that, you, you, you can, we're outperforming. Like open to it. No, no, nonsense. We're outperforming the countries in the EU that are currently in recession we're, more than we are, such doing, as Germany. We're, we're doing well, we've got really a less bad, bad recession than but Germany. Then just, I just want to go back to it, because what's, Richard is pivoting onto, you know, an articulate political argument about the state of this country. 
but your supporter, Derek, wants to basically bulldoze mosques. Lee Anderson... No, hang uh, on, hang on, let me finish. Uh, Lee Anderson was kicked out of the Conservative Party for saying that the Muslim mayor of London is controlled by uh, Islamists. Islamists. We are picking up a theme here, a very anti-Muslim theme. So just to his point, how does getting rid of mosques help make this country? How does that help with productivity? No take this, well, hang, on, hang on, how does hang it on, help on, with hey, GDP? Hey, you're actually doing that thing that you tried not to do, which is you are dividing things and you are putting words in, in Derek's mouth. He didn't say get rid of mosques. No one wants he to get... Did. He did. He, he kept he, saying he, the word mosques. He, he kept, I don't know what he wanted to do. Let's be very clear. OK, Richard, right. Let's not get hung up, but we no, need to go to another corner. Really because, okay? because people throw around this word Islamophobia, right? If you look at the Running Me Trust definition of Islamophobia... Oh, here we go. Right, if you look Absolute at the special nonsense. rapporteurs We've... to the human... No, don't hang hear on, me out. Hear me out. It's really important to understand what the words mean. The Human Rights Council's recommendation for Islamophobia says a no, fear, no. prejudice, and hatred of Muslims. You don't need to read I a definition. Need to be, I, I, I tell you why you I do because need, I, say, I don't need to be manly. We've li you've taken no, on a guy. Aisha, I tell you, I tell you why you need to do it because what you're trying to, to do. Hang on, let's, you're, you're, no, I'm sorry. Let's pause. Let's pause. We're talking about you. We're talking about Muslims. I'm sorry. The idea that you don't think there's an issue, there's a narrative about anti-Muslim prejudice, Richard. You are smarter than that. You are an articulate, smart man. You know that you've just had one of your supporters. Be realistic. Be honest. There is a strong anti-Muslim theme no, there is, there in is a, your party. No, abs I'm sorry. That is absolute nonsense. There is a there is an anti-extreme Islamist uh, concern in the country. That is what people. Right, so right. Right. We've got to take our break. Hang on. We've got to take. Wait a sec, guys. We've got to take our break. Nadine is staying with us, and we'll take some more calls if we can. We're continuing this conversation in a moment. If you want to say on whether bringing Boris back would we'll save the Tories, give us call. That's where we started. We, we drifted a bit there, but it's fascinating. 0207 862 -222. See you shortly. Just talk a bit more about this, Nadine, this, this reform thing. Would you consider joining them? Who, me? Yes, you. <laughs> Come on, I'm out of politics now, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm no longer an MP. I've done 25 years in Westminster. I'm over. I'm gone. <laughs> so... I know I'm a conservative, and I will, in the same way, she's always, you know, going to be a Labour supporter. I'm always going to be a conservative supporter. So I believe in the principles of conservatism, and you know, it's in my DNA. It runs through my blood. So no. Do you think Whit Reform will win any seats at the general election? So on twelve percent, no, um, most likely not. Um, I think you know, Lee Anderson might be the best chance they have of winning a seat, but history does repeat itself. And, you know, as in the past when Conservative MPs have defected to UKIP and thought they were going to hold their seat and didn't, you know, Mark, you mentioned Mark Reckless. And um, there was somebody else, actually. There was another MP in Douglas 2008. Yeah. We did Bridget and Bridget uh, went, did he? Bridget went to the other one, the other one beginning oh. of R, which is... Reclaim the, the Sean, yeah. Sean Woodward. Was it? He went to leave. No, that was, 2008. No, that was, 2008. You mean under? Wait a minute. Under you're testing Labour. us, Nadine. Somebody when I was a new MP who defected to UKIP, who about a year before the election and lost. So yes, this is I a well. It was. It was that guy, Castle Point, Robert Spink. That's him. That's him. Yes. So it's a. Oh God, you can tell how long we've been around, quite Jeremy. So <laughs> it's a well trodden path of you know Conservative MPs moving into UKIP and then losing their seats. Maybe Lee Anderson will buck that trend. Who knows? But you know, it's on twelve percent. Richard knows. I mean, he's you know, Aisha said he's a smart man. He knows on twelve percent he hasn't got a chance of winning a seat. What he will be doing though is making sure, and Aisha should be delighted about his twelve percent because what he yeah. what he will be doing and his party will be doing is making sure that we have a former socialist, uh, a, a, a Labour government led by Keir Starmer and socialism for the future. So Nadine, that's what... Nadine, we've got socialism we've got. already. It's high taxes, high regulation, nanny state. It's socialism. It doesn't work. Uh, you know, I can't argue with that. And the one point I will say is, you know, we are the highest tax, I think, is it in 48 years? 17. And the one thing that Rishi Sunak refused to do when he was a chancellor for three years, and, you know, we mustn't forget this, He's prime minister now. He was chancellor for three years. He refused to engage with any members of the cabinet or indeed even with Boris Johnson when he was prime minister. Have you, he refused to engage on the conversation have, of tax cut. Refused, have, point blank. Have you spoken to Boris Johnson about coming back as leader? 
I speak to Boris on a regular basis. I speak to him all the time. And we have numerous conversations about the state of the party. But what I will tell you is come this, on. he has no intention of coming back. Why would he? You know, why would he want to come on back to. and rescue the backsides of the MPs who actually removed him as prime minister? Why would he want to do that? He's living his best life. He's got an amazing house. He's off on a speaker, so he's earning an absolute shed load of money, having his best life, three gorgeous children and a beautiful wife. Why would he want to come back to Westminster? I a, don't, you know. Call. Let me take a call from Carl in Leicestershire. What about that? It just seems like Boris Johnson won't be the Conservatives' last hope here. Boris is the charismatic, intelligent person we need to run the country. We need someone of the brains... And as far as Mr. Tice goes, he's inciting racism. I'm German. I've been here for 65 years. And here's Mr. Tice telling me I need to go back to Germany. Absolute nonsense, Carl. I've never suggested that. I'm sorry. That is absolutely outrageous, slanderous and a lie. You know it. Carl, why no. do you think that the Richard Tice has said that? Carl. You said my country, it's our country. It's not your country, it's our country. And okay. I'm German and I live here. But are you telling me I need to go back to Germany? You know full because well, Carl, no one country. has ever suggested that. And for you to say, to say that is complete and utter nonsense. Is it, are we getting into this territory, though, Richard, with, with, with what you're saying, that you are fishing a little bit in those waters where you say, you know, we're going to take our country back? Because in code, that's what people hear. I don't think that's what Take people... it back from who? Take it back from immigrants? Take it back from asylum seekers? Take it back from who? Uh, look, for example, take it back from the people who at the moment are causing fear on our streets to the Jewish community week in, week out. Take it back from the zealots uh, who are with, with net zero. The people who the, protest the... about Gaza. So what, where, Hang on. where do you say people them? who people who people who are basically supporting Hamas in those protests who will not condemn uh, Hamas they will not call for the release of the hostages I've been on these marches they are vile that is the sort of thing that we're talking about we want our streets back you know this gender ideology that's being taught in our schools is awful zealot like behavior the eco zealots Asia. Okay. with net zero just eco zealots just, Gaza yeah, marches we're hearing this word soup of trans you know, anyone going on the, the marches, net zero. Richard, forget the sort of polemic and the rhetoric, just a really, to, to that gentleman's question, and it's a question that I feel very strongly as the, as the daughter of, of immigrants. When you say, I want my country back, and you talk about all of these people, what is your plan? Think, do you think, get I rid think, of them? Do you send them to another country? No, what, actually, what does you are, this you are, mean? You what are deliberately trying to divide people. No. Whereas actually, what, what I'm saying the question. is, I, what does it mean? What I said is, what I said. Do you put everyone in prison? Don't be ridiculous. No one's. But what do you do? You're deliberately stirring up hatred and division, which you say you're trying to avoid. That's Absolutely. So awesome. But look, what but we're okay, saying let's is, take okay. the marches, Richard. We have to go to our break. Let's take the marches. I've said we have to go to our break. What do you do with people in marches? Do you put everybody in prison if you don't like their view? What do you do with them? What do you do with them? Right to Where protest. do you put them? Aisha, the right to protest okay. does not give you the right to break the but law. What do you do? And the Met Police right. have the ability to ban the march. We're going to stop. Guys, pause, pause, pause. You are, you are we're creating hatred go to our break. division. Yeah, Richard, no stop it. Doing, Aisha. Stop. No Aisha, stop. No Hang on. Answers. Hang on. Nonsense There'll be more in a moment. Stop that. Uh, thank you, Nadine Doris, very much indeed. And uh, back to writing your novels now, OK? Thanks for your time today. 0207 862 We don't want to miss out on this. We'll take a quick break and be right back with you. We're going for it there. We are. We've got strong views, but I, ju I just want to say that, and this is, it's not, it, it just, I, I'm, I'm from a Muslim background, not particularly, you know, religious, but I'm very Muslim family. Life is so much harder for your average Muslim person right now, just as it is for Jewish people. And do you think he's adding be, to that? Well, I think everybody's adding to it. I'm just thinking, if, if that call that we just had had been reversed and that man had talked about destroying synagogues, I just wonder if the conversation would have gone a different well, way. The mosque, you're talking about the mosque. Yes, is, now. he right. talked about... Let, let, yeah. let's, 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 let, right, let's try and draw this together. Actually, what we need to do is, is identify and isolate the extreme Islamist activists who are awful, and we can all agree that. And actually, by doing that, we actually protect the vast, vast majority of hard-working, peace-loving, community-contributing Muslims 
in this country. And that's what we should... That's, that's, what we that's should taking celebrate. back that, our no, country. That's, 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 no, 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 no that's, that's trying to bring this together and I think have a debate, which, we, which I fear we haven't had properly, about the dangers of the extreme Islamists who, 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 we'll, right, who so are just we'll, awful. We'll come back, but let, let, we're talking about just, Boris here, but anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah just, go one on. point there. There are some terrible people who are on these marches. There are also terrible people across different bits of society. And if you want to tackle extremism, you have to bring people together. And by just going on and on about Islamism and these marches, there are also Jewish people on these marches. Now, I don't like these marches. I don't go in any of these marches, by the way. It's not my style of politics. I actually think that it, it, it does, uh, you know, I, don't, I think they're being sort of slightly counterproductive. But if you want to bring people together, then you don't just isolate one group and keep talking them up because what you are doing is it's in the same way that under the Labour Party there was anti-Semitism under Jeremy Corbyn and people like myself and others called it out because a small group of people kept going on and on about Jewish people like they were responsible for everything right. and conflating it. We're talking isolating, about Boris Johnson but here. Isolating individual groups like this is so counterproductive. If you want to get your country back and if we all want to see our country coming it's, together... It, it's our and, country, and, but it's got to work and, for everybody. You okay. have to bring all right. people pause, together pause, 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 Let's take some calls. Nick in Nottinghamshire, hi. Good morning, Jeremy. Well, what do you think? We were started on Boris Johnson, but we've gone all over the place now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, personally, as a Labour Party supporter, I would absolutely love to see Boris back. I would love it to be reminded of a man who blatantly lied to the public. He stood uh, he stood for six months lying and lying and lying and lying and lying and lying again straight from the dispatch box uh -huh, about 16 parties that you yourself um, publicised and people well, like... A whole list of, and, it seems a very long time ago did. now and there's quite a school I of thought it, mate, that I it doesn't thought really it, matter. Three... 378 Tories stood there backing him up and people like Nadine Doris were trailed out on a daily basis as a pitiful sycophant to defend the party line. Please bring Boris back. Remind okay. us of, of how dishonest the Tories are. You, are. Nick, are you, you're not in Lee Anderson's constituency, are you, by any chance? I'm, I'm very, very... Uh, close to it, um, I, um, I was actually in the very pub um, uh, that, that uh, was um, promoted by Lee Anderson about two two weeks ago, and I heard the most horrible, disgusting thing that I've ever heard in my life. Um, I won't swear online, Jeremy, but um, one of his supporters said, I voted Tory last time, but... I will not vote Tory now that a PAKI is in charge of them. It well, is disgusting. Well, it is that, repulsive. That, that's dreadful. That's dreadful. Thank you uh, yeah. for that. So that's that's one of Lee Anderson's supporters who well, allegedly. Well, I mean, there's a bit of a theme emerging, isn't there? There's well, a bit we, of a narrative. We there's can't be sure that was said, but anyway, thank you, David in Staffordshire. Hi. Hi. Good morning to you. Joe, uh, what? what <laughs> What do the Tories need to do to beat off Richard Tice's party? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, the right versus even further right is nothing I'm sort of worried about. I'm, I'm like your previous on, call, you call, uh, Labour supporter. OK, Sorry? so have you called for any particular reason? or? Yeah, uh, bringing back Boris. It doesn't make any difference. I think pretty much... Uh, the future of the Tory party in government is sealed come whenever, whenever he calls the election. Well, we don't, we don't know because something very bad could happen to Labour. You, know? I mean, you, you just don't yeah. know, do you? Uh, that, it, that's, that's why they're spinning it, it out. Need. Yeah. It's, 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 it is, just, just looking at the, the elect beyond the election, let's, let's say the Conservatives go down to 160 seats or less. It's possible that they need to link up with Richard's party then. David, would you suggest they should do that? Uh, well, again, uh, it's not my area of expertise. I've been left in all my life. So uh, to uh, a view on right wing policies is, is not for me. You, to you're say. a Labour supporter. Yeah. So you supported yeah. Blair and Corbyn. I supported Blair. I didn't support Corbyn. I okay. left the Labour Party when Corbyn was involved and I rejoined. 
Okay, right. So, are you any closer to knowing what Keir Starmer's policies are? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I listened to him this morning on the Rival Channel. And um, without giving too much away before the election, yeah, no, I know exactly what his policies okay. are. Okay. Are you, would you, if, if the Conservatives said, look, we're going to have to do this together or we're, we're both going to go down in flames, what would you say? Uh, there's no deals. I've made that very clear. Uh, we're standing in 630 seats. We won't stand in the Speaker's seat. And the British people deserve a proper choice. And as far as I'm concerned, both the other two main parties, their forms of socialism, high taxes, high regulation, you won't grow the economy, will remain in or around recession for a considerable period of time. The risk of Starmageddon, I think, is very bad for the country. Marion is in, Marian in Dorset. Hi. Hi. What do you think? Well, it's lively. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it's a lively old one today, isn't it? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I've always been a Tory voter. Um, but I'm what I call a bit in the wilderness at the moment. And I'm sort of I quite like what Richard Tice has to say these days. But I'm still not sure. I'd like to see Boris back because, of course, he'd only been five minutes in, them, in, uh, in his position, five minutes when we had COVID, etc., um, which sort of uh, knocked everyone sideways. And I think the problem with him not getting Brexit done was partly COVID and partly because a lot of the party were Remainers and they seemed to block everything that uh, he was trying to do. And, of course, next minute he's got rid of. Yeah. Um, it's and very, it's a, I'm loving your sort of analysis, if I may say so. It's, it's, it's sort of, it's very interesting. So, so you're now drifting towards reform because you're not yes. happy with Rishi Sunak? Oh, good grief, No. Right. Nobody voted for him to be prime minister. This is why I don't like our system. Nobody voted for him to be prime minister. Um, and I also, well, how can I say this? I don't think he's the right, he doesn't stand there and he's, he, he looks just like everybody else. We want somebody that's got a bit of personality. <laughs> it might not be what you like, but a right. bit more statesman-like. And there's nobody Well, I see Rich there. is now jutting his jaw out as if to say, I'm, I might just be the man. Yeah, he might just be the man. He's got to convince <laughs> me a bit more, but I'm leaning that way and having conversations with people we know. And as I must say, um, we do know some very nice Muslim people. They're not Islamists. They can't stand any of that. And if I can just say this, Go on, yeah. in the press over the weekend, there was a photo. There was photos of three streets in London lined with Palestinian flags. Now. A few years ago, I don't know if you remember, yeah. there were some people who flew St. George's flags um, ready for St. George's Day um, in England, and they were told to take them down because they didn't have planning permission and they would be oh, fine. Oh, I do remember that. Oh, I yeah. guess all yeah. these people that fly in these... Um, well, I don't flags. know. I think the George, uh, my memory is they were flying them from their houses or something, but yeah, you, you make a fair they point. Are, they Thank were, and okay. they were told to take them down because yeah. they didn't have planning permission. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Marion. Yeah, crazy things. Keith in London, hi. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm well, thanks. Bring back Boris Johnson to save the Conservatives? Uh, well, I, I surely hope not. Um, as one of your talkers previously suggested, um, he, he made a number of falsehoods. So I'd like to call them as opposed to lies. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and, and he did it and put his hand on his heart and professed to it all being true when clearly it wasn't. Uh, I wouldn't trust that man if he came back. Uh, Nadine seems to think that he's no intention of him running again. No. Thank you, Nadine. That's good news to everybody in the UK because I'm sure nobody really wants him to run again. But I don't think it'd be good for the country. And how will we look in the face of Europe? Thank you, Keith, uh, very much indeed. Thanks so much. Thanks for all your calls. Wow.